Gospel of May the 10th, 2016, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you, have, you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave me, to, you gave to me, I have given to them, and they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you give, you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I ha have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us dwell a little deeper into this beautiful gospel. First of all, the Lord Jesus is revealing himself, who he really is. He is God and none other. First, he is talking to God face to face, one to one. Father, give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. As if saying, give, give glory to me, that I may glorify you. There is absolutely no one else other than the Holy Spirit that can glorify God. So, he is revealing himself to be God. And then he goes on to say, just as you gave Jesus authority over all the people so that your son may give eternal life to all you gave him. That is the reason why the eternal law was incarnated so that we could receive eternal life. But we are to be given to him. It is not eternal life for everyone living, it is only for those who accept him. And what is eternal life? To know you. Now, I want to go on to this. Glorify me, Father, with the glory I had with you before the world began. And this is, of course, in accordance with what the same evangelist wrote in his prologue, in Archeologos, Archeologos hen theon. That is, at the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the eternal Logos, the eternal verb, who was engendered, who was uh, procreated by his own father received and enjoyed the same glory as the father as God himself he lowered himself so that he could become one of us but now he's cl clearly saying glorify me with the glory that I had before the world began so we know without a doubt that the Son is eternal. That it was all rubbish, as the Arians used to say, that he was a man that was adopted by God. Then he wouldn't have said that. Glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world began. That is some 16,000 16, million years ago. <laughs> 16,000 million years ago, according to the Big Bang. Hmm? He goes on to say, Everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine. Because within the Holy Spirit, within the Holy Trinity, everything is 
one because the three persons are one God. Now, what does he say about you and me? First, he's telling us that he came so that we might have eternal life. And now he tells us how. The Son glorified the Father because he accomplished the work that the Father gave him. Because Jesus accomplished the work that the Father gave him, he's asking the Father, glorify me now. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. To know the name, especially in the culture of Jesus, was something that only the very good friends or the family would know. The slaves would not know the name. I mean, the entire name. And to know you, and Jesus Christ whom you sent, is also to have a very close relationship. We need to know personally the Father and the Son. Now the Lord says, they have kept your word. They have kept your word. If we do the work that God is asking us, we truly keep His word. If we read about it, if we hear about it, but do that, don't do that, then we're not keeping His word. Then perhaps we might be losing eternal life. And that is very important. They have accepted your words and truly understood that I came from you and believe that you sent me. Then he prays for them. Are we truly in that situation? Are we really accepting the word of God? Are we doing his will? Are we believing that the eternal Logos was incarnated as the son of the Virgin Mary? that was sent by the Father so that we could be saved. Finally, the Lord will say, I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world. And He wants to, He wants the Father to save us, to sustain us from He who is evil. And that is very important. It is very important because without his help we can do nothing we will all perish but we we'll, with his help we know for sure that we will triumph that we will be victors over Satan the world and even ourselves if we let God take us into his hand and take us to where he wants us to be but we have to put our part we have to do our best to hear his words and to do his deeds, to accomplish the work that he wants us to accomplish. Do not despair. Do not despair if, like me, you fall down every day. Just as soon as you realize that you're falling, pick yourself up, pray again to God, repent and keep on going. Until we meet in heaven. God bless you all, brothers.